Benefits Management, which is on recruitments and compensation. Um, I am Supreta Gupta, uh, your lecturer for this session. Uh, for people who have been a part of last session, just to give you a brief, we did the uh, introduction about human resource management resource management and uh, today we will be talking about recruitments and uh, compensation so going back uh, to our uh, slide uh, when we talk about human resource uh, management recruitment and compensation becomes uh, a very crucial and an important aspect in human resource management because uh, this is where you induct a new employee into an organization this is basically the uh, you know power booster or uh, or a department which infuses fuel into the organization and for me fuel means or any resource which helps in uh, you know uh, revenue development or revenue generation and uh, humans play a very important role uh, so today in this module, we are going to cover uh, our recruitments, which is concept of recruitments, planning and forecasting, recruitment and selection process, uh, sources of recruitment and recruiting more diverse workforce, uh, employee outsourcing, induction and placement and compensation management. So to go ahead uh, today, we will in under recruitments, we're going to cover all these sections as we discussed earlier. So let's start what do you understand by uh, recruitments so if you if you go by the definition uh, by flippo from 1980 recruitment is the process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating and encouraging them to apply for the job so many a times we get uh, you know confused between recruitments and selection uh, basically, recruitment, if you wish to put it in a layman term, is marketing about your organization so that you can attract the pool of talent. And uh, selection starts when you get those many applications that you wish to, uh, you know, uh, go through and select the right person for the right job. So this is the basic difference of uh, recruitment and selection. So. Uh, Recruitment or recruiting is the process of generating a pool of qualified candidates for a job. So in order to understand recruitment, it is important for us to understand three important concepts or aspects of rec recruitment, which is employ employer branding or employment branding, recruitment process and uh, recruitment methods. So uh, what, what do we understand by employment brand? Employment uh, brand is the way your organization for, you know, organization uh, portrays itself in front of the applicant. Uh, it's, it's a way or a method by which a candidate perceives about an organization or an employer or as an employer. So a strong employment brand is the one which clearly uh, communicates the culture of an organization, its vision, values and mission statements. Uh, giving the people a reason or a compelling reason to want to work for that organization. If you understand in the past uh, 10, 12 years, there is a, there's a buzz in the industry of, you know, the best employer of the year or the employer to work with. So these sort of data are being released by uh, good consultants or HR consultants across the world, which actually helps or motivates people to uh, work for a different particular organization uh, because employment brand plays a very critical role in attracting and retaining uh, talent a recent uh, study highlighted that organizations with strong employment brand attract 3.5 times more applicants per job posting than do companies from the similar industry so an employment uh, i mean an employer branding institute study also shows nearly 49 percent of employees uh, has cited that an employer's reputation is a major influencer in deciding where to work. So, I mean, if you see employment or uh, recruitment in current uh, scenario has a very different concept. Initially, people used to go apply for jobs and they never used to really bother about uh, the organization's uh, you know, picture in the market. However, in today's world, uh, an organization's uh, you know uh, 
image in the industry plays a very critical role and how does an image is built in an organization organization it is built by the culture of an organization and uh, people get to know about an organization from the past employer employees who have actually quit and move on to the next organization your culture your value statement and the ethical uh, way of dealing your uh, these all aspects basically you know uh, creates a brand image of an of an of an uh, organization in the market wherein people then look up to either joining or not joining an organization so uh, if you see in the real last uh, few years we've also heard about various online portals called glassdoor or um, you know many others wherein people put a post reviews about various organization and rate an organization that is one uh, place wherein many uh, prospective uh, candidates go and search about an organization wherever they are being called for an interview before accepting any offer or before going in for an interview as well so uh, like for me for example when i was applying uh, for jobs i used to go on glassdoor and check how much time does a normal interview process takes in a particular organization because accordingly i used to make up my mind whether i need to uh, take a full day leave or a half a day leave or how is it going to be and used to even cross questions the consultant calling me for a job opening as to these are the reviews that are given online so how is the organization to work what is the hierarchy how is the promotion taken care of so oh, i mean if you see uh, the trend has changed today uh, i mean it's not just that an employer if they have a job or they have a particular uh, opening with them that means uh, you know they'll have thousands and ten lakhs of people applying for it they would be probably might be having you know a lack of people applying for a particular job opening however to get the right talent you need to attract the right talent so for that you need to have a good brand image because today uh, organizations are not in a position to uh, you know take any chance of getting a misfit for any profile so today because uh, any misfit for any profile results in uh, many uh, manner losses so you know training an employee putting him on a learning curve and then ultimately when the person doesn't deliver or if the person moves on to any other organization is actually a cost for any organ i mean for uh, for an organization hiring the talent so recruitment becomes a very important aspect in today's uh, uh, world wherein um you need to market your organization in a way that uh, your you get the right candidate for the right job i'm not i mean if you mark my words i'm not talking about best candidate i'm talking about right candidate because there's i mean if you get the best candidate probably he might not fit into the job role but a person who is willing to learn a person who has the right competencies or the skill set and who possess the knowledge and uh, you know technical uh, skills or experience in the past might be the right fit uh, however a person who is over qualified or under qualified probably for a particular job role they, it might be uh, the best option but then the best option might not work out so a right fit is of prime importance when we talk about recruitment so if we go back again into the second definition it talks about recruitment is a process to discover the sources of manpower to meet the requirements of the staffing schedule and to employ effective measures for attracting that manpower in adequate numbers to facilitate effective selection of an efficient working force this was given by order d and 1972 so uh, when we talk about recruitments how uh, a recruitment uh, drive is done or uh, the selection process happens it is disseminated by these this is this flow flow chart actually will help you to understand how a particular job role is even identified in any organization so when we talk about identification of a job role or a job requirement it starts from the basic thing starts from business objective anything in an organization uh, any strategy in an organization is formulated only when your business objective is clearly defined so once your business objective is defined the hr department then plans accordingly as to how many man how many uh, you know uh, you, uh, employees are required in a particular department and of what how many skill sets 
like uh, if we talk about manufacturing how many people meant uh, you know required in maintenance department how many people required in technical department how many required required in uh, the production floor how many in supply chain management how many in operations so everything is uh, is is actually deduced by your business ob- objective basically and once your uh, hr has planned the number of manpower required in a particular department then it moves on to job analysis and what is job analysis job analysis is basically a process of identifying similar roles and a process of uh, you know defining the roles and responsibilities of that particular role once your job analysis that is done as to how many people required what would be the i mean if if uh, if it is a say probably a manufacturing unit into iron or into manufacturing glass people generally prefer uh, male uh, you know uh, workers on the shop floor because uh, of the laborious task involved uh, whereas when there are intricate tasks involved like if you may is talk about jewelry making and you know uh, identifying minutest of defects in a particular uh, product females are preferred there because females have that you know i of capturing the minutest of defects so uh these the, the, these are the bifurcations basically that happens on in job, job analysis that the sex ratio the age ratio and uh, the uh, basically the human resource uh, or the human power ratio is defined in a job analysis once your job analysis is in, is in place it then we further bifurcate into it into job description and job specification now the basic bit difference between job description is it's an elaborate uh, you know uh, document which talks about uh, the key skills attributes um, and you know technical aspects uh, and the ro- role, ro- job role and the job responsibility that that particular uh, job holder has to perform whereas job specification talks specifically about the educational qualification or the technical qualification required by any candidate applying for that particular job role so if you say in uh, if you if you talk uh, talk about job description and job specification job specification is actually taken out from it comes out of uh, your job description so once these two things are in place then your recruitment uh, thing starts where you strategize as to from where we would be hiring these many candidates or kahan se ye skill set ka banda milega so uh, then you focus as to do you need a trainee an internship if you need a trainee or an intern uh, probably you need to uh, go into institutes for your uh, um, you know organizations branding and imaging uh, activity and then you know attracting the new upcoming uh, talent from the industry or if it is from uh, you know if it is a, a strategic role or a managerial role who all are my competitors uh whom am i am i targeting what sort of an employee i need so then you again then focus on a larger set of people and then your uh, strategy differs because then you will be doing a job posting and then you will be you know uh, identifying headhunters for you to identify that sort of a uh, employee from your competitor who can fit into this position so this is basically how uh, a entire recruitment strategy is formulated in any organization so there are three uh, types of uh, recruitment one is planned recruitment wherein it arises from the organization's uh, need and basically uh, when when we when we are actually working in an uh, hr department you come to know that how many people have completed how many years of services by when the person is going to retire so you can actually do a succession planning so when you do a succession planning as to these many people are going to retire or this these many people have resigned from the organization so or the, these are my c performers or d performers and i would be probably giving them a pink slip in the next two months or, or they are on a pip which is a uh, per- personal development program or uh, so pdp or personal development program wherein i am observing their performance and they might work out or they might not work out and then they might 
look out for a change so when when you have all sort of data with you you can actually identify that what sort of people or how, how many um, employees would you be requiring for a particular job set in the coming Two, three months, or six months time frame. So you get that much of timeline for yourself. So this is basically your planned recruitment process, wherein you know how many people are going to exit the organization for X, Y, Z reason, and how are you going to replace these many uh, job openings, if at all it will be existing in your organization. So these many people would be required, and then accordingly you strategize your recruitment plan. And there are the second type of uh, recruitment need is an unexpected recruitment need, wherein uh, you have come to know uh, that there is some person who is absconding from an organization who doesn't turns up, or due to death or accident or illness of any employee, wherein you need to that position is crucial and you need to fill it immediately. Then it becomes an unexpected uh, recruitment need. Uh, anticipated refers to those movements in personnel which an organization can predict by studying trends in the internal and external environments. Now, anticipated is basically uh, say tomorrow uh, my, I mean, a specific process is going to end, and uh, I would be needing, uh, you know, I would not be needing these many employees. Or if I come to know that there is a process which is going to come into my organization in the next six months time. So I'll be needing these many people or these many skill sets. So how, how many people, ex I mean, uh, people who are going to get uh, go on bench would fit into the new job, uh, the new process coming up is what I need to identify. So how many people are going to move because they have the required skill set and how many are not going to uh, be able to perform the new process job. So accordingly, I decide that how many people I would be needing in the new process, whether the entire group is going to move into the new process or a chunk of it is going to move. So how many more I need to hire from the industry? So it can even uh, be to the extent uh, uh, wherein, you know, a, like in uh, financial uh, sector, if you talk about uh, people are today talking about IFRS. And uh, if you do know, I mean, there are organizations who knows or who says that IFRS is going to become a critical uh, job skill requirement for any financial, uh, you know, em empl employee that they hire, because this is the current trend in the market. So now from if i need 10 ifrs qualified people in my team uh, say in a year's time then i would e actually ask either my current employees to go in for an ifrs certification or i'm going to hire new people for that particular position so uh, this these are anticipated uh, you know recruitment needs which happens and uh, because uh, th there is a movement that is happening from one department to other, or there is a movement in the skill set, or there's a new requirement in the industry that has come up. So this is these are the three basic needs of recruitment. If we talk about uh, there, are the basic features of recruitment has been uh, talked about here. It is a process rather than a single act or event. I mean, it is not that only hiring a particular uh, employee from uh, the market is recruitment. No, it is a proper process that has to be followed as to uh, how many people required, what is going to be the skill set, what is going to be the sex ratio of that team, what is going to be the uh, strategy as to from where are we going to identify it. If we talk about recruitment process, uh, it, it starts from generation of requisitions, which contains the details about the positions to be filled, the number of people to be recruited, etc. Uh, it is developing and location of sources, both internal and external. By internal, again, I mean within the organization. There can be internal job postings wherein uh, there are people who might be interested for a particular job role and they might look out for a internal transfer. So. Uh, this is also going to be uh, a part of recruitment process wherein you're going to attract your internal talent pool for a particular job uh, opening and also external as to um, any competitor organization or uh, institute that you are looking up to communicating the information of the organization to acquire prospective employees communication plays a very important role because uh, today when we uh, uh, talk about the digital world it has its own uh, you know pros and cons because not everything that you put across in an email is being read by the other person many i mean if we talk about us itself 
we actually whenever we are reading an email we actually try and focus only on the points that we are interested in and not everything so many a times we miss out or we do not read a particular information so when we talk about recruitment communication plays a very important role even though if you've sent across an email it is of prime importance that you call up your candidate and ask if he has any queries or concerns and if the person has gone through the email properly if he knows about the job responsibilities or not how if i mean uh, does he really possess that those skill sets and qualification if he does you need to communicate the same that this is the requirement do you really possess this because uh, if the candidate comes into your organization and your hr team is going out and having the initial round of interview then too there is a time that is being lost if the person is not have possessing that sort of a skill set and he comes and appears and it is a loss of time for the candidate as well so communication or is plays a very important role as to when do you need to come in for an interview um what time and who's going to get you know interview you so all these things minutest of details needs to be communicated because that actually creates an awareness in front of the candidate as well that the uh, prospective employer is highly concerned about their image and they want to clarify even minutest of things to me at the face value uh, and then the candidate would be either interested in coming or not because see it's no point calling a candidate and uh, uh, you know uh, spoiling his time and our time because end of the day they are also a brand ambassador of any organization today if you know even if i'm not selected in any organization i will go back and talk either good or bad about the organization based on my experience if i have i have been treated well within an organization for when i've gone in just for an interview plays a very critical role because then i'll have um high regards about an organization that i have been treated well and if tomorrow um, i given a chance that i'm given another opportunity i'll be happy to come so uh, because it's a very small world so you never know when you're going to rehire a person from the market and uh, if the person might hasn't fit in for this particular job role in future positions probably that person might be the right fit so communication plays a very critical role in recruitment process encouraging the identified candidates to apply for the job uh, i mean you might have seen uh, the current um, digital world if you click on a particular job posting on nokri.com or monster.com it gives you um, 10 different search results with wherein you will be interested in applying so how how does it i mean that's the algorithm that goes behind uh, any uh, search engine wherein if you click on something it is going to automatically club all those uh, things wherein it it matches your current click okay so this is uh, this is basically happening and people are utilizing this because uh when when you put across a job posting on nokri or monster your keywords plays a very important role so uh, when you put such keywords then you get a better or a larger talent pool applying for uh, your job so encouraging the identified candidates to apply for the job becomes a critical role if you talk about digitally it can done it, it is done automatically through algorithms that go runs behind various job portals but when it is uh pertaining to applicants who have already applied and you want them to come into the organization and uh, appear for the interview it becomes critical for the recruiter to call and follow up with the candidates as to uh, whether he is interested not interested and gauging that sort of uh, that's that sort of uh, you know uh, vibes from the candidate whether the candidate is is actually going to appear or not and if the uh, candidate has any queries or concerns it is the prime uh, responsibility of the recruiter to actually uh, help him in overcoming all his con confusions and if you want that candidate in your organization convincing that candidate to come into an, uh, your organization and be a part of the recruitment or the selection process so uh, this is again a part of uh, recruitment process that i'm i'm talking about the last thing that uh, comprises of any recruitment process is analyzing and evaluating the effectiveness of recruitment process by candidate progression so if you probably uh, the basic analysis that that any recruitment team should do is um, 
how many uh, for a particular job po posting that they have done how many candidates have been uh, you know uh, targeted and uh, how many applications were received how many people actually came in for the interviews and how many people have moved on to the next level of uh, you know discussion probably compensation or how many have been placed in offer so this is basically an analysis that has to be done by a recruitment team because this is going to give you a clearer picture as to which um job position is uh, you know uh, i mean when when there is an opening in a particular job position it is easy to hire which is very difficult to hire what all are the reasons and why we couldn't get the right fit these all questions can be asked later on to improvise on your recruitment strategy so this basically comprises of the recruitment process so now when we we have already spoken about the recruitment process uh, there are the key features that uh, uh, any recruitment um uh, process comprises is it is a process rather than a single act of or event a uh, linking activity as it brings together the employer and the prospective employees uh because see as i mentioned earlier as well if today you might not hire a particular candidate appeared in in your organization probably tomorrow you might hire that particular employ uh, you know candidate because uh, for this position he might not be the right fit for but for the any other or position coming up in the coming time or in the near future the pump if the candidate might be a right fit so you know linking the activities in a particular way positive active uh, activity to seek out eligible persons from which suitable ones are selected um by positive activity we mean uh, you should be uh, courteous enough when you are calling people into your organization for appearing for in, uh, interviews because uh, i i mean by courteous uh, we don't uh, mean to give them lunch or dinner or you know xyz things however by being courteous means at least greeting the person well uh, letting him know in advance how much time is going to uh, be required uh, you know for the interview process to you know and um in case there is any delay uh, apologizing or uh, in case there is any change in the schedule or the when you you know communicating the same so these are basic things that happens uh, or that that is a part of courteousness when we talk about interviewing process to locate the source of people required to meet job requirements uh locating uh, sources of prime importance if you need experienced people you cannot go and look out for experienced people in institutes because there probably you might get people who are experienced who have gone back to their basics and have opted studying a particular uh, skill set however the amount of uh, or the percentage of such people would be very less so uh, when we talk about experienced people it is better to you know target your competitors or target the market um uh, ability to match jobs to suitable candidates uh, where i mean if i'm looking out for a b pharma i might look out for a and um, i need a trainee i might go into a pharmaceutical a b farm institute who actually or i cannot i should not be searching it in any other institute or an mb institute so uh, you according to the job requirement you need to target the market it's a two way process between recruiter and the recruiter because uh, and anything cannot be forced upon anyone so be it a candidate or an employer it is a two way process it's 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 all about communicating a complex job that involves a lot of factors like image of the company nature of jobs offered organizational policies and working conditions so uh, again when we talk about this uh, last point if given a chance any candidate has to opt from uh, you know uh, organizations like google tata or you know um, aditya birla so when we talk about brand image people would obviously go and work for these in, these companies and uh, these companies actually sell their brand value to the employees uh, probably they might not be paying them as high as any other organization but the kind of work culture the kind of uh, uh, the the career graph that the organization shows and uh, uh, a candidate plays a very vital role i mean these are like top 10 uh, probably organizations in india uh, and people would die to work for or google is like a world renowned organization people die to work for in such organizations because of the working conditions and the work culture so, 
but such organizations even take cream of the cream uh, from the market so again it becomes a dream job for any candidate but when when we are competing uh, with such organizations we need to upskill our policies according to the uh, you know according to such uh, organizations in the industry to get the right candidate or the best fit for the role uh so the next is that uh, we move on to recruitment and selection process uh, as we've already discussed almost all these uh, uh, perspectives uh, with this process i mean i would like to define about general principles of recruitment policy because any um, any recruitment uh, uh, department should possess a recruitment policy and what is a policy policy is a basic uh, guideline that is uh, being i'm sorry uh, recruitment uh, policy is basically a guideline that is followed by um, that particular department so uh, how should we define a recruitment policy uh, is given in these principles there are basic four principles uh, for any recruitment policy which is one to find and employ the best qualified person for each job now again i would you know change the best word to the right qualified or the right fit uh, you know candidate for the right job to retain the most promising of those hired uh, once you have already hired any uh, employee that doesn't mean that your recruitment process has end uh, till the time that person comes and joins your organization signs the appointment letter and gets into a contract with your organization you need to be in touch with that candidate uh, just placing an offer doesn't mean that the employee or the prospective candidate will join you because during that uh, uh, phase of notice period the candidate might change his uh, viewpoint so you need to retain that candidate even when he is serving the notice period so that is also one principle that every recruiter should follow um, Uh, uh, to offer promising opportunities for the lifetime working careers uh, when we talk about recruitments it should not just focus upon the current job op- you know opportunity when we when we talk to candidate we also question the candidate as to where does the candidate wants to see himself in the coming 5 years or 10 years down the line so it is just not a, a mere question it actually helps you sell your organization by giving him a perspective road map as to his career development uh fourth is to provide facilities and opportunities to per, for personal growth on the job again this is linked uh, with the third uh, uh, principle that we just talked about that a recruitment team should always uh, you know uh, focus upon the career graph of an uh, candidate or prospective employee because that would entice him to join your organization but then honestly that should not be done, done just for enticing uh, the prospective client or prospective candidate if you can really do it or if you really possess that sort of a culture or value system within your organization you should be selling that uh, however if you don't then you should not be giving any fake or a uh, Uh, fake image about the organization to the candidate because the candidate once he joins he is not going to be happy if he comes to know about it and he will not be performing up to his up to the best uh, you know uh, uh, mark of his what all factors affect the recruitment policy there are many factors that uh, affect a recruitment policy like organizational objectives as um, as we've discussed it all right now that any um, target or goal or objective of any department comes down from the organization's uh, overall objective so if your organization's overall objective is to uh, attain uh, you know 500 crores in the next one year then f- how why what if after questioning all such uh, questions you'll come to know your own objective of your particular department personal policies of the organization and its competitors uh, personal policy uh, basically the culture and the value system the ethical uh, uh, processes that any organi- organization follows plays a very vital role and even how your competitor treats treats his employees or her uh, is is becomes a very critical role for yourself so there are many organizations in the industry which are unorgan i mean which are still in an unorganized state i mean when we talk about organized and unorganized um we if if you can um, identify is a normal courier company 
and of and fedex so when we talk about fedex it is organized and any uh, you know small uh, courier company that comes under unorganized uh, thing from the similar sector so when when we talk about competitors uh, fedex is moving on in Uh, digitalizing the entire uh, process of shipment of uh, products from one place to others so such policies impact in a big way uh, in the market as to which organization should i go in for should i go into fedex or should i go into any other uh, you know normal uh, uh, courier organization so your poly personal policies of the organization and its competitors plays a very important role uh government policies and reservations are of critical importance because uh, the law of land prevails and if you have uh, to take care of certain reservations and you should be giving uh, a particular uh, percentage of your uh, uh, of your job opening to a particular reserved uh, category of from that particular area then one should adhere to that and that should be a part of your recruitment policy preferred sources of recruitment uh, is also a critical factor in any recruitment policy um i mean depending on the uh, business objective depending on the organization's objective from where should i source business based on your even uh, business uh, understanding or the business uh, uh, process uh, or the product that you are into or services that you are into your preferred uh, source of recruitment changes if you are into designing of uh, garments or uh, you know manufacturing of garments you need to hire from the designing industry or uh, uh, or from institutes who who provide you such skills or, or such talent um, or the candidates who actually fit in into the designing industry organizations recruitment needs as to uh, do you hire fresh talent uh, you know out in the market or you need only experienced people because of the sort of work that you have that depends that affects your recruitment policy how much cost um, are you ready to bear or the organization is ready to bear again affects your recruitment policy which again talks about the financial implications and the selection criteria and preferences so uh, nowadays people are concentrating more on competencies and skills rather than on the technical know how because if you possess that uh, urge to learn new things then you might i might be interested in hiring you because uh, even though uh, if you talk about r r is currently get, gaining much interest in the, in the organization and you might not find people who are qualified or certified in art so uh, even if the person is showing me interest that okay i'm going to learn art or i'm learning currently or uh, on my own so then that person becomes of prime importance because he showing me the learning capabilities what are the prerequisites of a, a recruitment policy uh, i mean which should be there which cannot be avoided abide by the relevant public policy and leg leg legislation or legis legislation i'm sorry for this and legislation on hiring and employment relationship i mean as i said uh, the ground rule should be that you should follow the uh, law of the land if you need to give a particular uh, uh, percentage of your job uh, manpower to a specific category sc st obc general category whatever you need to do it if uh, if we talk about minority groups uh, if you are into a manufacturing unit and you are uh, um, you know um, working out from a uh, area wherein there are high percentages of minority people and you need to hire them then you should be uh, and there is a law against it you should be following that law uh, apart from that uh, minimum wages act is there bonus act gratuity act so pf act all these things if you are falling under that category or that domain you should be uh, giving it to your employees or prospective employees provide employees with job security and continuous employment um it should not happen that uh, i mean you are hiring a person because you currently have that uh, requirement in your uh, organization and and you are aware that in the next 5 uh, to 10 days or uh, in the next one month time this requirement might change or this this position might 
end so if that is the case you need to clear, define i mean give a very clear picture to the employee or the prospective employee that probably in one month's time this process is going to end so if you are really willing and ready to take up this task you can come and join us rather than faking it up and saying that you know uh, this is going to be a continuous uh, job role because uh, see if today you hire that that candidate giving him a fake picture about your uh, organization and not letting him know the truth uh, tomorrow that employee is going to uh, take a very uh, wrong impression about the organization and ba bad mouth about you and that is actually going to impact on your uh, employer employer branding in the market so tomorrow when you wish to hire a uh, talent for a long term uh, perspective people might not turn up or people might carry that notion that you know they say that this is for a long term uh, uh, it's a long term project however they downsize people at any given point of time so um providing employees with job security becomes of prime importance i mean whatever is uh, there you need to be very clear you need to be transparent and you should be talking the truth simple integrate organizational needs and employee needs when we talk about organizational needs uh, what is expected out of an employee and by uh, talking about employee needs if the employee uh, if, if the, i mean there should be basics like uh if we talk about manufacturing units uh you need to provide them with helmets or uh, you know gears which is going to help them or protect them from basic uh, you know wear and tear that can happen or anything that can happen on the shop floor and you need to even educate the employee that when they whenever they are at the shop floor they need to wear the safety uh, you know uh, or you need they need to follow safety processes or safety measures which is also uh, wearing such uh, you know uh, uh, gadgets which is going to help them uh, uh, you know uh, avoid any casualty on the shop floor so uh, you need to integrate both the things provide each employee with freedom and opportunities to utilize and develop knowledge and skill to the maximum possible extent uh, see anybody working in any organization um, works only for three reasons one wherein he is getting that sort of a learning two wherein he is getting money and three when is wherein he is getting that position so uh, all these three aspects are of prime importance uh, that is learning money and position or because by position you get that kind of empowerment to work or perform that particular job role because in the social context when you say i am a manager or when you say i am a general manager plays a very critical role at times because you get that uh, a feeling of self uh, you know actualization when we talk about the maslow's hierarchy so um, as an organization we need to provide a prospective candidate the freedom and the opportunity to learn new things and develop their own skill sets treat all employees fairly and equitably in all employment relationship nowadays the buzzword is glass ceiling when we talk about glass ceiling it's a uh, it's basically um, a ceiling which is there for female uh, candidates in any organization wherein the uh, candidate is not allowed to move up the ladder or take up leading positions so uh, when we talk about uh, treating all employees fairly and equitably uh, we need to give equal uh, you know weightage be it a male or a female Uh, when it comes to leadership roles so uh, this is one uh, um, aspect which is very important in framing a good recruitment uh, policy provide suitable jobs and protections to handicapped women and minority group encourage responsible trade unions when we talk about manufacturing units trade unions uh, unions still play a very critical role in many part of the uh, country so uh, however the uh, rules or the laws have made it stringent and uh, now it is in a better shape than it was before so uh, you need to be responsible or the organizations should be uh, responsible in uh, encouraging responsible trade unions be flexible enough to meet the changing needs of the organization so if today i have uh, i am into say uh, hardware or networking or whatever Uh, and i am going to venture it into uh, software developments then perhaps i need that sort of uh, you know employees in, uh, in in 
and i might i should be hiring them so this is also one prerequisite of framing a good recruitment policy as to how soon you can flip or change or uh, uh, you know uh, cater to your new business needs so uh, as i said that we've already covered uh, all these aspects from recruitment and selection process th then we move up to planning and forecasting so what do we understand by planning and forecasting in any uh, recruitment or department or an hr department see planning and forecasting becomes a very critical process in any organization or in any uh, for any department because until and unless you have the numbers in your hand you would not be able to strategize the right policy. see or the right uh, thing required for that for in your organization okay so um when we talk about planning and forecasting uh, the first step is determine your business goals uh any as i i have been harping upon defining business goals from my module 1 itself that your business goals give you the right uh, path to i you know determine uh, where any department is heading to so your mission your vision statement your value statements should be very clear so that all your departments within the organization can define their own business goals scanning the environment now if we talk about uh, these are basic five steps that is determining business goals scanning environment conducting gap analysis setting up hr uh, priorities to help achieve departmental goals the wherein the strategies are also defined and fifth is measure monitor and reporting so now we will actually talk in depth about each and every step so the step 1 in planning and forecasting is determining your business goals uh a solid understanding of government and ongoing developmental business and hr priorities emerging changes and trends and the impact of legis legislative reforms are needed to determine business goals so uh, when whenever any organization defines a business goal they needs to take care of all these uh, aspects what is the current trend in the market do you need to hire a saas uh, certified employee or you need to hire an r certified employee or you need to hire somebody with a knowledge of big data hadoop mongodb xyz basic basically uh, something which you would be able to define only when you know which product or service are you uh catering into the market uh again the impact of legislative reforms uh, i mean if any organization um it it becomes uh, very uh, critical for an organization to take look into legislative reforms because your economic and your law and order of uh, your of your uh, uh, nation or your country uh, plays a very vital role in uh, getting investments for your business today nobody would be interested in investing in syria because the condition in syria or the economic condition is very fragile whereas uh, when when we talk about booming or developing nations people would be interested in uh, you know investing their money in india or sri lanka or malaysia or thailand or singapore because these are developing nations that are coming up so these are developing countries so uh, your legislative reforms your economical conditions of your country plays a very vital role in defining your business objectives and bas uh, basically even um, planning in a, in advance that as to uh, would you be able to get the investments from uh, if you are willing to get investments from foreign nationals uh, would you get that sort of an investment or would you get invest uh, or people would invest in you in your own in your own uh, country so these all things uh, becomes uh, of great uh, plays a very vital role in defining any business objective this step should also consider whether or not strategic partnerships should be established and ensure that accountability requirements are met what do we understand by strategic partnerships as to you know uh, any specific uh, department like uh, any organization when you start functioning in any country there are basic uh, approvals that is required from various uh, government departments so uh, this step is also of very prime importance wherein uh, 
how, how many affiliations or how many uh, licenses you need from which all organizations within uh, your within the country wherein you are ready to set up your organization so all these things determines your business uh, goals about government policies every year uh, there are you know various speeches that comes across i mean your budget or you know yearly budget that any government rolls out plays a critical role in defining your own business goals because if there is a slight change in your subsidy in uh, tax rates like recently uh, there is a shift from a, a different tax system to gst and uh, sgst uh, taxing uh, system so how is it going to impact your business based on the impact you need to change your policies you need to change your processes you need to change your business goals so this is all about step 1 step 2 is scanning of the environment again by scanning of the environment uh, we mean you know uh, workforce analysis as to once a business goal is understood understanding of the workforce as well as planning for projected shortages and surpluses in specific occupations and skill sets will be required uh, key demographics like employment data and characteristics like sex average age occupational groups skills or competency profiles etc as well as internal workforce trends workforce uh, trends that is retirement eligibility vacancy rates turnover etc are important factors to consider when conducting a comprehensive workforce analysis this information is likely uh, available in existing departmental workforce plans through it though it may require updation now uh, i have already read this entire uh, slide to you because uh it is a very critical uh, process of uh, uh, any uh, hr department because workforce analysis gives you a clear picture as to what is your current state of uh, manpower and where are you heading to how many people you have currently what all skill sets you have uh, currently catering to and what you might need in the near future and and help you in defining a strategy in for your recruitments uh for your recruitment team to cater to your future needs so a workforce analysis basically is a very crucial and an important aspect in any planning and forecasting uh, activity for, for your hr department be it recruitments be it training be it any other uh, department within your uh, hr department itself the other uh, aspect is internal scan i mean internal scan is primarily focused on identifying the factors within the department that might affect the hr capacity to meet departmental goals each department will be able to identify internal opportunities and channel challenges it will be important uh, for organizations to build on to this its strengths to man minimize uh, uh, minimize challenges and risks as uh, by internal scan is like uh, factors like if you are uh, moving into erp system or uh, i mean you know your uh, it system or your it infrastructure is changing so this is the basic internal scan that, that you know uh, during the transition how many man hours would be spent in the transition how many people you would be required in your team to cater to the uh, you know the, the shift in uh, 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 shift into the system because Uh, probably if you have three employees and one is already dedicatedly uh, working into uh, this transition from into I IT uh, structure that is happening within your organ within your department then probably you need a helping hand in your recruitment drive that okay i am uh, in a i'm i'm short of one employee because of this thing happening so i might need uh, one more employee within my team to cater to these many job openings so this is basically an internal departmental scan that one needs to conduct uh again internal scan i just gave one example there can be many things changes in legislation uh, anticipated changes in funding or budgets changes in changes in leadership and priority by leadership means uh your ceo or cfo is changing and that uh, has impacted your entire uh, business process because he was uh, he he was a, a man of great influence so how to change your priorities or your department how to motivate your employees within your organization becomes a uh, begin becomes of great importance health and safety again um, what product or service you cater into do you 
even take i mean uh, do you work with hazardous chemicals and how can you look into health and safety of your employees working with such hazardous, hazardous chemicals corporate culture plays, plays a very important role employee engagement by employee engagement it doesn't mean activity like birthday celebration it is also pertaining to the learning curve that you're providing to any employee because that is how any uh, employee can uh, you can keep any employee engaged because no matter how many fun activities you do uh, within your organization that is that comprises of employee engagement because you keep the atmosphere light and lively however that is not the sole thing that should uh, be considered as employee engagement employee engagement is beyond that uh, you know conducting your year, yearly innovative uh, you know competition within the organization wherein you allow uh, people to come up with innovative services and products that we can get into or find solutions to problems that you are currently facing and then rewarding that employee is also a part of uh, uh, employee engagement organizational restructuring that whatever is happening by restructuring any merger or acquisition happening with the organization again uh, uh, because of that uh, what all changes might uh, take place in your business objective in your departmental objective management practices uh, again internals can because uh, if you are a lala company you might not get a person from you know a good organization who would be ready to work with you because uh, the atmosphere is entirely different so or the culture is entirely different so the management practices that any organization follows becomes critical into what sort of talent are you going to get from the market leadership styles uh, do you have participate do you follow participative leadership or autocratic leadership all these things internal policies where in immigration and diversity that could affect the workforce do you provide on site opportunities to the uh, employees where they are allowed to work um, on site in different location and that can be one enticing factor to get a good candidate from the market um by external scan um, is basically for it focuses on identifying those external factors that may affect workforce capacity given known operational needs and emerging issues uh, do you have such skill set or such people available in the market and uh, uh, what is the percentage and how can you hire such people this is an external scan uh, or any of your competitor uh, who is downsizing and uh, you know or a process is closing and they are relieving their uh, group of people and if you get to know that market information and you also know that you'll be needing such skill set then you know immediately tapping the opportunity getting those people on board again is an external part of external scan so an external scan should consider the opportunities that exist which can be advantageous to the department so this is a particularly an advantageous state wherein uh, if somebody's uh, your competitor goes bankrupt and he is downsizing and laying off all the employees and you know that there are people who in the market in working for the, that competitor which is very important for you as an organization you immediately roll out offers or you call such people and you ask your head hunters to identify such people from that particular organization so uh, you need to have an external scan or keep a tap as to what is happening within uh, the industry or with the, with your competitors it will also enable the department to identify risks or potential risks in the external environment um crucial uh, decisions happen i have seen one such crucial decision happening in one of the manufacturing units where i was working it was into manufacturing of floor glass so uh, when we talk about floor glass asahi is the market leader in floor glass when we i uh, mean um, in, in automobile glass when we talk about floor glass saint gobain was the market leader so uh, it, there was a clear bifurcation in automobiles asahi in floor glass uh, saint gobain so when we were venturing into uh, floor glass floor glass business uh we were targeting uh, same gobain employees who were either putting in their resignations or moving out uh, to some other organization or even enticing the current workforce to come and join us because we were giving them a better learning opportunity or a better role because we were telling them that you know when we when you join asahi you will get into a very uh, uh, crucial role because we are actually uh, setting up a plant in baddi or setting up a plant in uh, bundi or whatever so 
uh, these are basically regions wherein you will identify glass manufacturing units because of the silica sand that is available. So um, external scan plays a very critical role when I know who is a market leader and I, if I want my top talent from the market leaders, how should I get the person? So any organization wherein or any department uh, need to have an external scan because that is going to help you strategize and get the best talent for your organization. External scan uh, comprises of uh, current workforce trends, demand and supply of employees in certain occupations. As I said, uh, how many, uh, I mean, if it is a critical position, if it is a rare skill, where are you going to find it from? What should be the uh, market or the target audience? That needs to be clearly defined, and that is only possible when you have an external scan. Uh, what sort of candidate pool is available in the market is again a part of external scan. Current and projected economic conditions. Uh, as I said, Syria is into a very different uh, state, and you the economic condition is not uh, you know good enough for any. Uh, or to start working out there. So whereas when we talk about like Brazil, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Philippines, so these are, you know, developing nations. So people would be interested in investment, investing in such uh, developing countries, wherein the economic conditions are still, uh, you know, at a better uh, level than countries like Syria. Technological advancement, which could create any new any create new employment or negatively impact certain occupations or positions so uh, technologically we are developing on a daily basis so anything uh, today all the businesses are being uh, you know uh, any businesses is actually affected by the technology in the industry so when we talk i mean again i go back to the same example like 10 years uh, 10 years back, we had landlines, we had, uh, you know, keypad uh, phones, but today we are talking about smartphones. But again, this is not the end of uh, innovation that has come into the industry. So today, when we talk about smartphones, probably uh, we, are, we are using an iPhone and that's the best thing uh, available in the market technologically. But that is not the end of it. In the next four years, you'll have something else coming up. So your technology advancement plays a very critical role in your business uh, functioning migration patterns as to uh, like you know by migration we need mean uh, like people uh, we, we've heard this term when we were kids like you know there are seasonal migrations that happens in the workforce that uh, in a particular season you'll get a lot of labor from a, uh, coming down from up and bihar or from Jammu or from South, but at specific time you'll fall short of labor because then they have certain things in their local areas and they move back to their hometowns and their villages. So this migration pattern is also prevalent in organizations and uh, migration means if tomorrow you in Singapore is opening up uh, opportunities for uh, say IT development uh, in, in IT development sector again. So there is a lot of people who will be interested and who, who would like to apply there. So such migration patterns happen internationally as well in global markets as well. Intake for occupational groups and post-secondary institutions. Uh, uh, by occupational groups, we mean there are um, uh, a, to give you an example, Amphi. Um, so Amphi is basically a certification which happens, and there are hardly sixteen hundred candidates that passes out or in a year. So uh, there are, I mean, Amphi is again um, a course for in financial sector, and the key uh, uh, organizations which hire an Amphi uh, uh, incumbent is uh, from the insurance sector. So all the banks, top banks, actually wait to hire such students who have actually passed out with good uh, marks from our certified by Amphi. So um, again, um, this comprises of an occupational group or a post-secondary institution wherein every organization at a good, uh, uh, who cater to the, uh, cater into insurance policy uh, policies would hire an Amphi graduate or would hire an Amphi certified professional. So, uh, occupy, uh, employment practices of competing organizations. Uh, 
how do i treat my employee makes it an easy way for my competitor if i treat my employees good then it would be difficult for my competitor to actually uh, entice my candidate and pull him out of my organization similarly vice versa if the uh, management practices or the leadership practices in any of my competitors uh, organization is not good then i might uh, you know be able to entice the right candidate whom i have been tapping on that he this employee can be uh, the best fit for my critical role in my organization step 3 is gap analysis Uh, so basically what is uh, gap analysis gap analysis is what you have and what where do you want to reach so when you know what you have currently and where do you want to reach you'll immediately understand where is the gap and what i need to fill so this is basically gap analysis current and future hr requirements needs to be projected based on an analysis of departmental goals and priorities and environmental scan questions that are helpful in determining hr needs identifying gaps and projecting in future hr requirements includes the follows do you foresee a skill shortage in any specific occupational group will changes in program delivery require the acquisition of new skills do you have succession plans for critical positions have you conducted a risk analysis of the elements of the scan critical to the success of your organization these are critical questions uh, in any gap analysis step 4 is setting up uh, hr priorities and there are simple strategies developing a talent pool Uh, work environment improvements if you know that there are certain set of uh, management practices which are not good for your organization you need to put a stop on it and uh, in, you need to even get into good uh, management practices so basically uh, that that comes under work environment improvements organizational development competencies and skill development uh by competencies and skill development uh, we mean understanding what competencies your organization workforce possess and uh, what competencies are required for the future development of the organization based on your goals that you have set for yourself and then uh, providing the trainings required to your employees to develop those competencies or skill sets employee engagement workplace well being recruitment or staffing and retention policies all these are simple strategies to uh, set your hr priorities last but not the least is monitor evaluate and report uh, whenever you set anything for yourself any target or you need to uh, you know always is monitor whether you are on the right track or not evaluate what all uh, things are not in place and then report it and change those things this is uh, consider these questions when you are in following this process have clear and measurable hr goals that and that has been identified uh, by measurable they means that everything needs to have certain number or me- or or a category wherein you can measure that uh, kpa so uh, when we talk about kpas that is key performance key performance indicators or attributes for your i mean an individual you should have the similar thing for uh, your department as well and these kpis should be measurable so that time and again you can go back and check whether you are on the right track or not are the hr performance measures aligned with other existing accountability measures with the other departments when we talk about other departments your sales department your finance department your operations your supply chain management every department will have their own uh, you know objective and their own goals their own kpis so is your department's kpi aligned with theirs are systems in place to track performance indicators and analyze the cost benefit do results from performance indicators inform priority setting for the next financial year okay today you are not able to hit 500 crores you are you reached 400 crores then are you able to understand why were you not able to reach the other 100 crores and if not what all changes is required within the organization to help you achieve those 100 crores and then adding it to the next financial year's targets what is the degree of success that has been achieved uh again degree of success have you achieved your organization's target by 100% or 80% or 90% is what you need to i mean you should be able to understand 
this i mean by this we move on to the next thing which is recruitment sources uh, as we said recruitment sources are can be internal and external by internal we mean uh, we mean any uh, candidate who would be interested in moving on from one position or who desires to be in some other role and is in, and they get an opportunity internally to move into that role that is called internal source of recruitment wherein you help your own employees to apply for a job position available in some other department or in some other location so this is internal source of recruitment by external source of recruit recruitment uh, we talk about people i'm hiring people from outside your organization from the market or uh, from institutes and all so this is basically internal and external by internal again persons who are uh, already working in an organization constitute the internal sources retrenched employees retired employees dependent of deceased employees may also constitute the internal sources whenever any vacancy arises someone from within the organization is upgraded transferred promoted or even demoted that is your internal source of recruitment what is external sources external sources lies outside an organization here the organization can have the services of employees working in other organization job aspirants registered with employment exchanges students from ed, uh, ed, educational institutes uh, candidates referred uh, by unions friends relatives etc candidates forwarded by search firms and contractors candidates responding to the advertisements issued by the organization and unsolicited applications or walk-ins so this is basically basically an external source of uh, recruitment recruiting more diverse workforce uh, i mean by diverse uh, workforce we understand like uh, expatriates again going back to global uh, human resource management um, <clears throat> Re recruiting for diverse workforce is a very complex uh, uh, you know uh, uh, responsibility and carry a lot of inbuilt pressures along with them it it would be erroneous to assume that job requires the same set of skills in different locations so uh, what all are factors are responsible in recruiting a most diverse work, work workforce is general and technical criteria by general and technical criteria we means that uh, maybe today ifrs is in to boom so if if you have a um, if you have an opportunity coming up in say singapore and it needs a ifrs qualified individual so today organizations basically hire or a uh, higher skill sets which are currently available and even use that skill set in different locations so there are general skills which are available across but there are technical skills which are available in a specific uh, uh, country because there it has been identified it is booming so you basically take the talent from the uh, uh, nation wherein uh, that is readily available and put that per person into the other uh, Uh, on-site project that you have in some other country so language skills become of prime importance because again when you are working in a in a different uh, country uh, you should know the local language because that is going to help you in communicating well with the uh, workforce uh, with, with which you are going to interact in that country cross cultural suitability because uh, when when we talk about cross cultural suitability you need to hire a candidate which is comfortable uh, with the different culture or the different mindset that the person has in the different country wherein you are providing him with the opportunity motivation of foreign assignment is of prime importance it is not uh, it is not possible that you know uh, you send an uh, employee by force to a different location the employee should also have that interest of working Uh, on a formal uh, in a in a foreign assignment your family situation of the candidate is of prime importance the spouse should be helpful uh, or willing or motivated in uh, letting the family member go and work in some other country or uh, to that matter if it is a long term assignment the spouse should be ready to travel with the uh, employee to work in a foreign assignment because uh, the employee is going to need the family support as well so uh, because it's a very different uh, country and to cope with uh, in a different country alone becomes difficult so it's better a family if 
if your family is with is there with you you get that emotional uh, you know uh, help and you stay fixed in that location so uh, this help moves i mean as you move on this ends our uh, uh, first uh, module uh, wherein uh, uh, first module from the second module of recruitment now we move into the second stage which talks about um, employee uh, outsourcing and induction and placement so it, i find that there is nobody online so um, we will not have any feedback as of now so, but we will definitely move on to the next slide which uh, talks about um, which talks about employee outsourcing and induction and placements so what is employee outsourcing induction and placement uh employee outsourcing is basically a uh, a practice of having certain job functions done outside a company instead of having an in-house department or employee handle that that function for you it can be outsourced to either a company or an individual so uh many organizations in current uh, uh, time is moving into employee outsourcing because it helps uh, organization get rid of basic uh, uh, you know um, i mean uh, many uh, aspects into hr which are time consuming and can be actually given to others to manage wherein if you are dealing with a large group of employees i mean specifically retailers today or retail chains today or uh, even uh, 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 like in aviation industry people prefer outsourcing because you actually hire in bulk and when you hire in bulk your legal you need to manage legal aspects you need to manage the basic documentation and all which is very time consuming and it is also uh, you might need specific uh, people or a large number of people to handle such uh, you know such these many employees so the best option in today's world is to outsource it to uh, an organization who is uh, possessing that capabilities and can manage this for you so this is basically employee outsourcing employee outsourcing uh, refers uh, to the shifting from the traditional employee employer relationship it involves transferring employer responsibility to a staffing agency or a placement agency outsourcing human resource functions allows focusing on business development and provides administrative relief from many employment uh, uh, responsibilities such as payroll preparation income tax reporting employee benefits and workers compensation so this is uh, basically employee outsourcing what is induction and placement uh by induction we means uh how do you orient the new employee so that he gets comfortable in his job role by placement it is actual uh, placement is the actual posting of an employee to a specific job it involves assigning a specific rank and responsibility to an employee whereas in an induction program uh you basically uh provide the new candidate with your organization's information which is going to help him in delivering his job role better so uh, it is basically talking about uh, your organization's policies the critical leadership roles being handled by whom and uh, this is going to basic information which is necessary uh, at the initial stage for performing a particular job role is covered under induction uh if you if i read it out to you an induction program is an important process for bringing staff into an organization it provides an introduction to the working employment in working environment and the set uh, and the setup of the employee within the organization the process will cover the employer and employee rights and the terms and conditions of the employment um induction and placement process goes hand in hand and uh, basically it also comprises of socialization whenever a employee joins any organization it is very important for you uh, for important as an uh, employee to know who's who within the organization and how could i get my work done or how do i reach out and whom do i reach out when i'm in a pro in a problem
problematic situation this is basically socializing uh, socialization um, it it when uh, during an induction program when you uh, give such information the employer uh, the, the prospect the new employee gets to know ki who is my buddy or who is at a critical position and how to deal with that person basically so this is basic concept of socialization which is going to help a person in making his way through the organization in uh, and achieving his personal goals and objectives follow up uh, many a times we think that we have given an induction and now our role is done no at times people miss out on certain information or forget certain information and get uh, Uh, and when they are actually performing their job role it, uh, they get into a situation wherein they don't know whom to uh, seek so uh, to avoid such situations in every 3 months or in every 6 months uh, it is the responsibility of the hr department to go back to the new employee and check whether he has any queries or concerns and uh, you know how could you be helpful and help him in uh, uh, or giving them a refresher induction program so that they don't forget and they don't miss out on any important uh, you know factor and even take fall feedbacks from them whether uh, you know what's happening in the department or not is also very important so the new employee becomes a very critical uh, lead for you to understand what's actually going in the department and uh, to help you improvise in your different uh, strategies and different practices that you follow so now we move up to compensation what do we understand by compensation and uh, what are strategic pay plans pay for performance employee benefits and services and challenges of remuneration is what we are going to talk about in this section so what do we understand by compensation compensation is basically any reward or recognition that you give to your employee in return of the services that they have provided to you so this includes direct financial compensation wherein your salary plays a, a very important role and talk, and that is that comprises of direct financial compensation bonuses commissions and all are uh, that comes into that which is paid out on a regular or a consistent interval pro, you know uh, is all about finan- direct financial compensation there are indirect financial compensations as well by indirect we means um a uh, including all financial rewards that are not included in direct compensation and understood to form part of the social contract between the employer and employee such as benefits of leave retirement plans education and employee services so these are indirect financial compensation uh, uh basically uh, uh, if you provide a housing facility to your employee comes into indirect financial compensation which is not a part of the ctc structure but you are providing it as a facility or if you are providing transport facility uh, for the child of your employee to reach his school or college and all so that is again uh, 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 an indirect financial compensation non financial compensation referring to topics such as career development advancement opportunities for recognition as well as work environment and conditions uh, wherein uh, from an organization perspective you are investing for the benefit of your employee so this is also a part of your compensation things but it is not in direct form it is non financial nature of compensation is basically defined as base pay variable pay and benefits by base pay is the basic salary which is given on a um, regular interval to an employee by variable pay it is basically a certain percentage of your uh, cost uh, cost to company or ctc which is paid based on the performance of an employee and benefits are basically like uh, there are few allowances that you are given or um, like we recently discussed financial non financial aids that you help your employee with become a part of your benefit like your general insurance plan or accidental insurance plan becomes a part of your benefits what are strategic pay plans strategic pay plans refers uh, to the policies and decisions on how organizations give compensation to its employees that may satisfy employee as well as achieve organizational goals and object, uh, uh, objectives so what all comprises um, a strategic pay plan is equity uh, 
uh, you might have heard many organization giving equity to the employees or uh, employees at a very high um, uh, designation or at a very critical leadership role so uh, you give a certain percentage of the equity so that the employee and is now um, you know happy that okay i'm part of the organization and i'm part of the equity uh, attract talent it helps in attracting uh, talent into your organization and retaining talent excuse me and it uh, uh, it helps you control the behavior of a uh, employee it controls the cost because uh, you're not paying it directly but you are paying it in a different form and it helps you comply with legal rules and policies eases out, out of operations so uh, now we move on to the next thing um, pay for performance what is pay for performance pay for performance is not just a pure compensation and benefit concept uh, pay for performance is a right mix of the hr process which supports the optimal performance of the organization and it pays the most performing employees significantly differently includes special compensation schemes for the selected group of employees and gives career opportunity to the best talents in the organization this is basically pay for performance wherein you are paying uh, an employee based on the performance that he is delivered nowadays people talk about in hr uh, about bell curve uh, when we uh, whenever we talk about um, uh, increments that happen on an yearly basis we have review systems in place wherein you review an employee as to how he has performed performed on the kpi that has been agreed with him and once that uh, is you know uh, ascertained because it is only a certain when you have a measurable uh, uh, you know key performance indicator in place and when your measurables are in place you can under you can measure the candidate as to how what was his performance i mean if you talk about sales uh, the direct measurable would be uh, the sales figures that the person has achieved and how much he has achieved based on that you can rate him Uh, rate him as A category, B category, or C category. So once you've done that, uh, based on uh, how many A's and B's and C category employees you've got, you place them in a bell curve. And when you place them in a bell curve, you pay your A category a certain amount, and you pay your B category a certain amount, and C a certain amount. So everybody gets paid based on their performance, not, uh, not. equally because when you pay everyone an equal like if you use an equal uh, system like you know an a performer gets a 10% increase a b also and a c also then the employee loses interest in even uh, achieving the targets because they know that i'll be paid 10% end of the year and even a c category will be paid 10% a year so why should i put extra efforts to do something uh, extra so that i can be paid more because end of the day everybody works for money so uh, money is becomes a crucial uh, you know motivating factor so when you're paying everybody at the same uh, level so the interest of uh, doing something new or doing something innovative or getting into some new process uh, the employee loses out its interest that's the reason pay for performance plays a very important role what is employee benefit by employee benefit uh, it is basically what an employee receives more or in addition to their direct remuneration these are basically fringes uh, fringe benefits that are uh, given to an employee by an organization so apart from the total package or the total salary package so the benefits and services however are indirect compensation because they are usually extended as a condition of employment and not directly related to performance this is basically given to every uh, every employee of that particular designation into a specific rank and uh, it it is basically over and above the direct remuneration that you are providing employee services is in addition to uh, fringe benefits organization also provides services that employees find desirable like uh, you know providing transport as i said providing transport facility to the uh, kid of your employee Uh, to the school i mean basically it's it's uh, provided to all the employees they can uh, take the facility these services are provided at low or no cost to the employee or having like a canteen in your organization and giving the food at a subsidized rate or providing transport facility for your employee to reach the office premises because it is located in a remote location these are provided at the discretion of the management with consultation with the trade unions okay 
services includes what all services includes subsidies for the purchase and upkeep of work clothing and uniform eating facilities transportation facilities child care facilities housing services financial and legal services recreational cultural and social programs educational services medical services outplacement services flexible time and cafeteria now what all are the challenges of uh, remuneration uh, see when we talk about uh, remuneration um, it is it should be basically skill based pays salary reviews should be there pay secrecy should be there comparable worth should be there and employee participation should be there so uh, these are basically um, the challenges in remuneration internal versus external how much you pay your employee for a similar job role which your competitor is paying so that becomes uh, a critical challenge for any organization pay equity as stated previously is achieved when the compensation received is equal to the value of the work done so every employee should be would be interested in being paid for the value of work that the employee is uh, performing for an organization compensation policies are internally equitable when employees believe that the wage rates for their job approximate the job's worth to the organization perception of external equity exists when the firm pays wages that are relatively equal to what the other firms are paying in the similar type of the work so basically how much you are paying and how much your competitor is paying is of a prime importance or is it is one of the challenges of remuneration fixed versus variable pay uh, by fixed pay is uh, a specified a specific amount that hits your account on a regular interval is your fixed pay a variable pay is uh, is basically a performance bonus or uh, anything which is pertaining uh, to a certain percentage of your ctc which is again linked to organizational performance or your own performance comprises of variable pay so nowadays variable pay programs are widely followed throughout many organizations and for all levels of employees uh, it's basically team bonuses or say profit sharing programs that are being implemented in current uh, in, in in new uh, age organizations so while we using such variable pay systems one should look into two major issues which is one should performance be measured and rewarded based on individual performances group performances or organizational performances should the length of time of measuring performances should be long or short i mean when is the payout should be made should it be, should we make it on a quarterly basis six monthly basis or a yearly basis and uh, you know uh, what i mean how, whose performance should be measured for the uh, release of such variable pay my uh, performance or my team performance or the organization's performance as a whole so now the uh, organizations have clearly defined uh, the percentages like uh, which is like fixed pay is going to be uh, say 80% of the ctc 20% is going to be variable out of which 10% is going to be paid on your individual performance 5% is going to be paid on organizational uh, performance and 5% on team performance this is the way people you know um, develop an incentive structure or develop an incentive plans for an employee so how much is enough is the question when we talk about challenges performances versus membership uh, many organization uh, give a, a good uh, pay structure based on performance of an employee whereas there are uh, organizations which actually focus on the membership or focus of uh, focus on the uh, tenure an employee has spent within the organization and then accordingly remunerate the employees so this is one of the challenge uh below the market versus above the market uh, uh, remuneration challenge because uh, many a times you get employees from the market who are underpaid so how much is enough is the big question uh, whenever you are talking about compensation so do you wish to give uh, you do you wish to bring that person uh, at, as per the industry standards or you wish to just give him a average hike so this is basically one of the challenge um open versus secret uh, pay in the real world the issue of paying compensation openly or in a secret way may often become a bone 
uh, of contention between employees and the employer because uh, not everybody would appreciate if you're paying somebody in a secret way so uh, current research evidences indicates that pay openness is likely to be more successful in organizations and in ex and extensive employee in in involvement in an egalitarian culture that encourages trust and commitment basically if you have an open pay structure wherein everybody knows as to like in this particular payment or in this particular uh, job or rank or designation this is going to be the payment and if it is evident and transparent to all the employees within the organization it creates a very healthy atmosphere because then the employee would not compare himself with the other uh, uh, employee and uh, people would know that okay this is the payment and i am being um, you know fairly paid or not so this is basically open versus secret uh, pay challenge of any remuneration uh, structure so this uh, brings us uh, to the end of today's uh, module uh, which is which was on uh, compensation uh, recruitment and uh, employee induction and employee placements um, in case uh, you have any query or any concern you can uh, simply drop us an email and uh, the same would be forwarded to me and i would uh, be happy to uh, you know respond back to your queries so have a nice weekend uh, talk to you uh, sometime soon